that's going to be tricky. Well, we'll do that. Good morning. So if you're here for publishing your events with views in CCK, you're in the right place. If not, well, have a good time anyway. Um, so I timed this talk. It's about 45 to 50 minutes, and we're already a little bit late. So there's a lot to cover. So I'm going to kind of breeze through here. Um, if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them, but maybe we can hold, hold them to the end unless it's um, something I'm totally messed up on. Thanks. So next slide. Uh, so here's an overview of the talk. I'm going to install Drupal. I'm going to build an event content type. I'm going to create a calendar view and an event list view. And if we have time, I'm going to show you how to theme the field location field I'm going to add and how to build this entire thing into a feature so you don't have to keep redoing this every time you build a site and you want to use events. Um, so the first thing you would do would be to create the database. And I already did that, so we're going to skip that slide, but it's in the deck if you need it. And then we're going to untar Drupal. Now, I already retrieved the Drupal distribution, so I'm just going to untar that. And then I'm going to move the Drupal into my uh, sites folder. And uh, my site is named crawler.eng.uci.edu. Now, where we're going to configure Drupal, so CD into the site slash default, copy the default settings to settings.php, edit that, and we'll set up our account and password. Let's hope that's right. And then Drupal needs to be able to write this directory and the settings file, so we'll add permission for that. And then we should be able to install. So install Drupal in English. Now it's installed, it's pretty fast. We'll configure this, so give it a, a, an email address. Administrator account, I use admin. And the time zone looks correct, 10 o'clock. So everything else is good. So we're going to go ahead and save. So the site's installed. That's all it takes to install Drupal. It's really pretty simple. Um, so we're going to use some modules in this, um, in this talk. And I could un use wget and go get them, and I could untar them, uh, same as I did with Drupal. But there's a module for Drupal called Drush that makes this a lot easier. If you haven't um, heard about Drush, there's a talk about it today. Um, and if you uh, missed that and you still want to do things the old way, you sure can. But it sure makes it faster for me. So first, to put the permissions back on the dot and the settings. And then I'm going to install these modules. So Drush DL to download. CCK, views, date, calendar, and devel we're going to use for a couple tricks. OK, next slide. So our modules are installed, now we need to activate them. You can activate the modules through Drush, but each module that you download is what Drupal calls a project, the tar file. So it could have more than one module in that one tar file. You need to know the names of the modules in order to enable them with Drush. So for example, the CCK project has the content module in it. So it's just easier for me to use the graphical interface for this. So we go to administer, site building, modules, and we'll find the ones that we want to turn on. So in the CCK section, we're going to turn them all on except for content permissions. Content permissions gives you individual permissions on each content field that you add to a content type. And that's cool and all except for the default is no permissions to anyone. So if you turn that module on, you're going to have a lot of configuration you need to do. And if you forget, only the administrator is going to be able to read your content. So on the calendar side, we don't need calendar pop-up. We use date, date API, date pop-up, date repeat. I'm not actually going to use, but we'll turn that on. And in devel, we're going to use devel generate. And in views, we'll just turn all of these guys on. So now our module's installed. When we install date, date gives a, a little bit more of a configurable time zone. So when we first set this, the site, there was a time zone setting. Date has its own time zone setting, so we'll go set that now under date and time. 
So America, Los Angeles, save that. There's also date formats. So I'm not going to play with these very much, but they have a variety of formats that you can assign to how dates are going to be displayed. And they're all pretty much awful. Um, you know, most people are expecting to enter things in a standard way like m, m slash d slash y, you know, hours, minutes, am, pm. So a lot of these date fields are really great for a computer, but they're not so great for a human. So I'll show you how to add one that's a little better for a human. So here's m, j, y, g, i, a. Boy, that's tricky. It does tell you what it's actually going to do there. So that's August 8, 2010, 10, 10 a.m. And we'll save that. We can go back to configure, and you could pick that new format for one of your choices. So I'll just assign that to the short format. You can also add your own custom formats. You want a human format, you could add that. Um, some places it's usable, and some places you are stuck with the three they've given you, long, short, and medium. So we'll just go with short. So our next step is to add the event content type. So under content management, content types, add. So we're going to call this event, and it's going to be the content type event. And we'll just say an event. as a date, time, and location. So that creates a content type, but the only fields that are in that content type are the ones that are in there by default with Drupal. So basically for us, title and body. And we need to add a couple fields. We need a date field, and we need a location field. So you use the add field down here to add the date. So it's going to be named field date, and it will be a date time. And we will do date with pop-up calendar because I think that's cool. And with CCK, you can just drag this up to the place you want the field to go. So I'll just drag it right under title, and then we'll save. Now it'll let us configure the date field. So these top part up here is the settings for this date field as it is used in our event content type. You can use the same field in multiple content types. Like say it was a, um, a room address, a street address field, and you've got two different content types, and you want to use the same field in both. Uh, it's easy to reuse it, and a lot of the settings go along with it. So we'll make the default to be now, same as from date for the to date. The input format, yeah, that one's pretty terrible. So let's go with, uh, actually, I guess we'll stay with that one. And then the time increment, we'll go with 15 minutes. And then on the global settings, these are any time this field is used. You can, of course, add another date field. It just can't be named field underscore date. So we're going to make the to date required. We're going to make the from date required. We're going to make the to date required. And I think the rest of it is all good. Let's, let's go with the short format. So there's the date field. We also want to add location. So we'll add a new field called location. Location is just going to be a text field. We'll drag that underneath date. And for some reason, menu is above a body. We're not going to really use menu, so I'm going to put body under. Uh, location. Save that. Okay, now we've got our location settings. So, location of the event, preferably a street address. And I'll show you why we want to do that later. Um, this is not going to be a required field, and it's just plain text. So, there's our event content type. It should be all set up. Let's see if we can create an event. So we'll go to Create Content, Event, and we'll add our event. Drupal Camp LA 2010. So here's date pop-up. It does this little calendar doodad. It's kind of cute. And let's see, 8 colon 00 AM. And we'll end on Sunday. And we'll end at 6 00 PM. And you see how this is, is forcing me into choices? So um, each little field of this is, uh, is handled independently. So like the AM, PM, you have to do like up arrow and down arrow to change that. Um, this stuff's done with jQuery. So jQuery is doing the little date pop-up, and jQuery time picker is doing the little time pop-up. Personally, I think this time picker is terrible. Um, we'll be able to turn that off later, but I've got it in there for now. So our event is at 25 East Peltison, Irvine, CA. You see, uh, fine engineering. 
Join us for Drupal Camp LA. Babe. So now we've got our event. And this is the home page, so this has been promoted. I'm sorry, what? Oh, sure. Is that better? Sorry about that. Um, so this uh, this node got promoted to the to the fr front page. So this is just a feed of all of the nodes on the site, and there's only one node, so there it is. So our next step is to give the is to create the calendar. So we'll go to administer uh, site building views, and you'll see that there's a calendar, and it's already it's grayed out here. So we're going to enable that view. It's a pre-cooked view that is provided by the calendar module, and then we're going to edit that because we have a few changes to make. So in particular, this view shows uh, a calendar view. In fact, I'll pull that up real quick. So this is what the calendar looks like. And you can see our event is showing up on the 8th. And the, the reason it's showing up on the 8th is because this calendar is showing the node's title and the last updated date on the node. For a calendar, we probably want to show the date of the event, not the node's last update date. So we're going to make a few changes. First off, under filters, we're going to add a filter for node type, because we only want event types showing up on our calendar. We're also going to change the node argument here from uh, updated date. We're going to change that to be the from date. We're going to change the sort criteria. We'll get rid of this guy, and we'll add a from date. Sorted ascending. And we're going to zap this field. Updated date. And we'll add the from date. Now here we get some choices on how we want this to display. So, yeah, go back one. Backspace. Um, so we'll use the short format that we picked earlier. OK, so that looks pretty good. So let's save that. We'll see how that looks. So there we go. Our event's showing up on the right days, showing in the calendar. Let's add some stuff to this calendar so we can see how it looks when you start filling it out. We're going to use the Devel Generate module to do that. So I'm just going to add. 250 event nodes. And then we'll go back to our calendar. So now we've got nodes all over the place on our calendar, so we can kind of see how this starts to look. Um, there's a couple things we can do to make calendar a little better. Um, there's no menu for that, so we'll add one. We'll add a normal menu and we'll call it calendar. And we'll put that on primary links, which in this theme is going to show at the top of the screen. There's also a link for adding a new event onto the, uh, the system. And so we have to tell the system what type that's going to be. So we'll use our event type. So now we have a link up here for calendar. And when you're on the calendar, there's a link down here for adding a new calendar uh, event. There's a couple things about the calendar view that we need to tweak. So if you're familiar with views, it starts off by using these default settings, and then all these other little displays inherit the defaults unless they're overridden. So the, if you're looking at like this one here, the calendar page, you see these are uh, italicized. That means that they're inheriting the default values from the defaults. But if you come down here to iCal feed, you can see filters has, is not italicized, which means if I've overridden that filter, it's not getting the defaults. So our defaults are published and node type event. Now iCal feed is getting published and updated date is greater than now. The updated date greater than now is good, except for we don't want updated date. We want the other date. So let's see if we can fix that. We want our to date. So we, we only want to see things in the iCal feed that, are, that haven't ended yet. 
And we also only want to see event types, so we'll add that filter too. All right, let's see how that looks. You can preview the iCal feed down here. So there's our iCal feed. It's got the, uh, the start and end dates of our event, and uh, it's got a URL, but it doesn't have much else. And iCal can provide some extra fields, so when you view that on your calendar, it shows a bit of detail about the event. So to do that, we need to, um, we need to configure it here. So here are our choices for the field. And you see, we don't have a lot of choices because we don't have very many fields in our display. So what we'll do is we'll go to fields and we'll override the list. Actually, I'm sorry, I want to do that the other way. Push that back. Yeah, we'll go back to the default and we'll add a couple fields. So we're going to add body. but we're not going to display it in most of the views. And then we're going to add location. And again, we're going to exclude that from the display. And we'll save that. So our calendar doesn't look any different, but now the iCal feed can take advantage of those two fields that we just added. So we go to the iCal feed, we can configure it here and we can say we'll use the nodes title for the iCal feed title. We'll use body for description and we'll use our location field for the uh, location. And then when you take a look at how it previews, then you've got all that, that stuff in there. So you've got the URL, you've got the location, you've got description. So it makes for a really nice iCal feed. Now I would show you how this works, um, but this server is firewalled, so Google can't talk to it. But I can log in. I can log in to my Google Calendar account. And I can add, oh, we already have that on there. Let's zap that guy. So what you would do to add your iCal feed is you would go here add by URL, and I'll add groups.drupal.org slash iCal slash 3002. That is the iCal feed for the LA Drupal group. And then if you look at the view, you can see that now we're seeing those events. And your iCal feed will work exactly the same way if you, once you're exporting and assuming you're not behind a firewall like my server. And other um, calendars can import that feed and they'll see your events and they'll have details. There's one more feed we need to, f one more display we need to fix here, the upcoming display. It's doing the same thing, it uses updated date instead of um, the date th uh, from the uh, event. I I'm gonna leave that for now because we have a lot to cover. Um, but if you were fixing this, then you would just change those fields too. I don't know. I assume your HTTP logs would show. Um, sorry. So that's the calendar. But we probably would also like to have an event list, particularly upcoming events. So on this site, the home page basically serves as our upcoming events list. But your site's probably going to have a lot of other nodes. And you may not even have the event nodes being promoted to the front page. So you might need an event list page. So we'll create one. So we'll go to Administer, Site Building, Views, and we'll add a new view. So our view is going to be named Events. And just like in the calendar view, we're going to filter this. So we're going to look for, let's see here, we're going to look for Node Published is Yes. We're going to look for Node Type is Event. And we're going to look for the node date. 
our, uh, our event date field that we just added. We use the to date. And we want to show the things where the to date is greater than or equal to now. So we'll show events up until they've, been, that they've already ended. Now I'm just going to use teaser view on this. So we'll switch the row style to node teaser. And as you can see in the preview, it, you, we've got a feed that looks pretty much like what the home page feed looks like. So we're showing 10 nodes per page. So let's turn the pager on if we have more than 10 so people can page through the list. So that's pretty much the view, but we need to publish that view. So we'll publish it first as a page. So I'm going to add a page display. We're going to inherit almost all the settings. We'll come down here and add the URL. We'll call this events. And we'll add a menu item for this too. And we'll save that. Oh, did I give something? Did I save that? Thanks. So that gives us our events view. You can click and you can get that list of events. And then at, down at the bottom, you'll have the pager. So you can page through the events. Now these are only upcoming events. So Drupal Camp LA is here. It's still happening. These are the events that uh, Devel Generate created for us. But stuff that's in the past doesn't show. And we'd still like to get indexed on those events, the things that have happened in the past. So we'll add another view that gives us those, those um, events. So we'll go back to our view. And we'll add a display. Well, wait, let me change one thing here. I didn't set the title on that view. Go ahead and call that upcoming events. And we'll add a second page. And we'll override the title for that one because that's going to be event archive. Now the upcoming events was a node teaser display give a few details about the event. In the archive list, we're just going to want to have a list of the previous events, and we're not going to show teaser mode. We're going to use fields. So I'm going to switch this one to, um, to fields mode. I'm going to override so that I don't um, clobber my original view. And then we'll add some fields. So let's see. We'll add node title. And we'll link that to the node. And then we will add, what else have we got there? The location, yeah, that's a good one to have. That's probably fine as it is. And then we'll add the start date of our event. And here we'll just show the start date. We don't need to show the end date, it's already ended. And we'll use our short format. And this page's path is going to be events slash archive. And we'll add a menu item for that too. So that's what it looks like field by field, but I'm really thinking more a table would work better for this. So I'm going to switch the format into a table. We'll make the table sortable. So now we've got a table with our event name, the location, and the date. It's looking pretty good. Let's save that and see how that looks. So we'll go to our new URL, events slash archive. That looks pretty good, but they're kind of all over the place here. So I think I'd rather have them broken out a little bit. So I'm going to change event archive. We're going to add a sort, and we'll sort by the date. And we'll sort that ascending. We'll override that because we want that here. And then we're going to add an argument to this event archive so that we can get year-by-year -year archives.
So if you forget the, arg the argument, we'll provide one. We'll provide today's date. And we're only interested in the year. And we're looking at the from date. And let's see, we'll override that. And we'll save that. And let's go preview that display. So now we're looking at all the events in 2010, and it's uh, sort of ascending by date. But I would like to have links to get to the other events that are in other years. And I could just add a block of text here, and I could put the years in, and I could link them, because the argument is on the end of this path for us. So if we put 2009 here, we'll get the events that are in 2009. But I'd like to have, like I said, some a little list of links. And there's a trick thing we can do with the event view to get us that list without having to know in advance which years have events. What we're going to do is add an attachment. And in the attachment, we're going to change the argument a little bit. First, we'll override this because we're going to make a change and we don't want to update our original. And here, instead of, um, instead of providing the default value, we're going to provide a list sorted. Uh, we'll do sorted descending. And the granularity, again, year by year. And it's our from date. Okay, and uh, uh, let's see. We want list. No, we want unformatted. And we're going to use a little separator here. So I'm going to use a space, a vertical bar, and another space. And that gets us this list of these uh, years that we want to show in the event. And I think I'd like to have a little header there on that, too. So I'm going to override the header here for this view, and I'm just going to say archive. So now it says archive, and it's got the year-by-year -year list. Now the thing with this is this, this uh, attachment is inheriting the argument from the display it's going to be attached to. So if someone puts in an argument like 2010, then the attachment is only going to show the link to 2010. So we're going to turn off the inherit arguments. And we're going to turn off the pager. And we're going to turn off the limit on the number of items to display. So that'll get us this list. And then we're going to attach this. Let's attach it to both of our pages, our, our event list and our archive. And we'll put it at the end. Let's see how that looks. So there's our list of events, and here's our archive. And we can click around to see the ones that are in. Oops, I attached it the wrong way. Let's fix that. So that was our attachment. Yeah, right here, this one. I want it to link to the archive. I probably should change the name on that, huh? Let's do that. A little more obvious. So now when we go to one of these event archive lit links, we'll get the table view. And we can switch around. Okay, we're going pretty good for time, so I'm going to show you a couple tricky things. This is the fun part. So remember when we, uh, well first off, this display, this really isn't very attractive. I think it would be better with the date in line. So, Let's fix that first. So that's in the content type. Under manage fields, under display fields, you can control that. So we'll put those labels in line. And we'll change the date format to long format. So you've got two choices here. How does it display in teaser view? And how does it display when you're looking at the full on node? We're just using the same thing for both. So now when we're looking at the teaser view, we've got it date, colon, and the long date, and the location. But this location, it would be kind of cool if we could do something with that. So I'm thinking we'll try to link that to a map lookup. And the way you do that is by overriding the template that this CCK location field is going to use to display itself. So you need a copy of the CCK uh, field template. That's in, um, let's 
to the sites, all modules, CCK, theme, content, field, .tpl. And we're going to copy that into our theme. Now I'm using the Garland system theme. You'll probably have a theme of your own. Garland themes in the system folder of, of Drupal rather than in the sites folder where you put your own stuff. So it's not really a best practice to do this, but for this demo it'll be fine. So that's themes Garland. CD in there. Oops. Copy that file in there and CD into that folder. So you need this content field to override any of the CCK fields. You have to have this, this template in this folder or CCK will ignore your custom templates. We're going to make a copy of that content field to be content field dash field location dot tpl dot php. And we're going to edit that. And we're looking for the part where it's actually displaying the item, which is right here. And I'm going to replace that with a link. So I'm going to zap that out and I'm going to replace this with Drupal's L function, which creates a link. So the first argument is the text, like 25 East Peltison. Second argument is the URL it's going to link to. Then the, the query string is going to be Q equals and the text, again, 25 East Peltison. And then we'll have it do target equals underscore blank so that it pops a new window when you click on that. And we'll save this. And now we'll go back here and reload. And we need to flush the cache on that so that it sees that change. So that's in site configuration performance. There's a button down here for flush clear cache to data. Now if we go back to the home, there it is, it's linked. And when I click on it, it takes me to Google Maps and it shows me right where we are. So I've got a few things that you might want to change on your own that I didn't have time to do in this talk. Um, the date and time formats, you know, and how those are displayed. Some are okay, some not so okay. I mean, this is 24 hour time. I think for a human, AM, PM is a little more meaningful. Um, the field date, we, we did change it to inline. Um, in the views, like in this, in this view, where was the table view? Right, it's just title, location, date. I mean, it, that's fine. I mean, you might want to play with that. But in the date content type, or sorry, the uh, event content type, the date field, under configure, there's this little thing here about the years back and forward, minus three, plus three. It's only going to let you enter a date that is within three years of your current time. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have events that go back quite a long ways. And we plan pretty far in the future sometimes at the university. So you might want to change this. It worked okay for us with Devel Generate. It only created nodes that were in that three, plus or minus three year range. But um, if you're going to let people enter stuff, you might want something a, a little more easy, like um, minus 100, plus 100. There was also, there's also some settings in views that control that. So you can, the views argument has that same field uh, that controls how, how many um, years plus and minus it will allow. So you'll probably want to change that too. I think that's pretty much it. Is that our last slide? Yeah. Wow, 40 minutes, we did great. Okay, questions? I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, I don't hear so well. What? Oh, how did I generate them all? You type them in. One by one. I use Devel Generate. It's a module that helps you when you're building sites so that I could create a whole bunch of events. I mean, they're all random text. It's not like they're real events. Um, and it creates random values within the value ranges that are okay. It's really nice for testing your site, but I mean, they're not real events. If you were gonna create real events, you would go to Create Content, you would click on Event, and you would enter your event. 
Oh yeah, the time picker. I should have had that on my to-do list. You can turn this time picker off. I really don't like it. It's here under administer, site building, oops, sorry, site configuration, date pop-up. So the time picker here, we just turn that off. And when you create the event, the time field will just be text. You can just type whatever you want in there. Now it'll still validate that. So you might get complaints where with the time picker, it's going to pretty well guarantee that what you enter is valid. So you know you have to decide which way you want to go. Other other questions? This one? Well, that's a good point. We must have left something out. Let's fix that. Yeah, we have a missing, it's greater than or equal to nothing. Yeah, that's not going to work. So we need that to be now. That looks better. Thank you. Yeah, that looks right. Go. Yeah, what you're talking about is like uh, an event that starts and ends on the same day, right? So on the calendar, the, um, the date field is automatically going to change the way it displays. It, it, it's the, the way the template works for that field, it's just going to show you a start time and an end time. Um, if it's on a second day, then it's going to show the start date and the end date. Yeah, another thing you might want to change is here on the calendar how you're displaying date. I mean, it says August 7th to August 8th. I mean, maybe that's helpful. But for an event, if, if your events are all single day, I mean, you've got the date right here. It's Wednesday, August 4th, and then you're saying it again, August 4th. So you might want to customize the way that field is displayed. Create a new date format that say just the time, G colon IA, which would be the 12-hour time with AM, PM, and then switch the format to use just that uh, display uh, type for in this view so that you're getting just the time instead of the date. I think the date's kind of redundant. On the other hand, if it's, a, if it's an event that spans multiple days, it, I guess it's nice to see um, the, the start and the end date. So it's just a choice you could make when you set your system up. Other questions? Yeah. I added a field to date options. Okay. Oh, you went to another screen to add another option. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Oh, okay. Let me see if I've got that. So uh, that was in the, the uh, I'm sorry, the date and time. Is this what we're talking about? The format here? So you can go to date formats and then you can do add format. And then this is where you can type a new format in. Then once you've created this format, you can go here to configure and you can use that format in one of these picks. How did I know which code letters to put in there? Is that the question? Yeah. Um, it gives you a hint. It says see the PHP manual for this. So. If we go open that, the PH, it's because it's using PHP's date function to generate that. So it's got this list of all of these code numbers. Gotcha. So at least Drupal gives us a hint. As you type the string in, you know, you start seeing how it's going to display. So you can see something there coded as something. It looks like the B coded as something and the, the D coded as something. I mean, you could just type your name in here and see what it's going to do. Who knows, right? Each one of them, each one of the letters, upper and lower case, probably does something. Um, I've just entered these things so many times, I know the ones I'm looking for. Yeah, other other questions?
Yeah, there's some nodes, that, there's some modules that might help you with that node import, or there's a feeds API module that you could pull content in and create nodes in your site with. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, those, those are good to go look at. So take a look at one of those two and see if it would work for you. Oh, so if you want to pull other content from other places and create nodes in your site, then feeds API module would be one to look at. It can pull a feed and then create nodes in your site. Yeah, there's some, there's some modules that will help you with importing content from other sites. Um, I'm thinking it's, uh, it's called the Migrate module. Uh, might be able to help you with that. It's been a while since I've done that. So th this thing was pretty cool and all, but I mean, that was a lot of work, and I didn't make very many mistakes because I've done this so many times before. Still made a few. Uh, it would be nice to be able to just, you know, create this on the fly on the next, the next site that I build and not have to do it over again. So we have a little time. I'm going to show you how that works. So I used what's called the features module. The features module, I'm not going to demo that, but features module lets you go through and select all of the different uh, components of your uh, setup that you want to include as a feature. And it creates a new module for you. The module contains all of the settings that you just biz finished setting up your site with. So I created that module, and I've got the module file. I called it uh, calendar. Where did I put that? Event calendar. So there it is. So I'm going to make a brand new Drupal site. I'll untar Drupal again. This only takes a couple minutes. Pastry.eng. Pastry, and we'll just go with password. I think that's all set up. And I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use. Um, PHP my admin rather than the command line to create this database. So we'll add a new user here. We already have pastry? Yeah, he's already on there. So we'll just add the database. P A S T R Y. So I already created a user named pastry and assigned him the privileges for pastry database. So it should be all set. So let's see if we can install. Oh, what did I do wrong? The password's probably wrong. Let's try that again. Nope, okay, we'll have to set the password. go with password. Okay, and we'll change the configuration. And let's try the installer over again. Okay, we'll install Drupal. So bam, that's installed. And 
here's our new site, nothing. So let's get those modules that we used earlier. Jamad group minus right dot and settings. So Drush, download, views, CCK, date. What was the other one? Calendar, right? We're not going to need Devel this time. And in the modules directory, I'm going to untar my event module. So now I've got calendar, CCK, date, views, and my event calendar module that features created for me. So let's go back here and we'll activate some modules. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little shortcut and I'm going to find my, um, oh, what's missing? Features. Right, we'll just go to our module event calendar and we'll click on that guy and we'll do save. And it will say, oh, you're going to need all these other modules too. But fortunately, we have all of those and we'll let it go ahead and activate them. So bam, now we've got the site and it's got our calendar and our events. So let's go to calendar and we'll add an event on pastry. And there it is. We've got our calendar. We've got our list of events. We've got our event archive. And it's all set. Go. Yeah. That's the week. So it can show year. The year view is not very meaningful. But month, week, day, and um, week of the year. So. That's the week view. Any other questions? Yeah, go. The, the attachment? The attachment's going to attach to a view. So if you've got the view showing somewhere else, you can attach it there too. Um, there's other things you can do, though. I didn't do any of these things. Uh, I per personally, I like uh, the way this little attachment shows with the links. But it's also possible to filter with what they call an exposed filter. So you get like a select box, um, a drop down list, and you can put those either in with the view or you can have it render those in a block and then you can put the block somewhere else. I did that on a site I worked on recently. I don't know if we're going to be able to show it. schedule. Yeah, it's not showing. I, I think I'm not logged in, so we're not seeing it. Yeah, what, what I did was I rendered a little block here with some links. Um, I think that's a view, too. I'm not sure. But it's possible to take these uh, exposed filters and show them in the sidebar if that's what you want to do. Uh, we did that on this on this site. I'm sorry, I can't show it right now. Um, like a list of checkboxes for which types of events do you want to look for, and then you can hit the go button and it'll search and just show you those kinds. Other questions? Yeah. Well, there's the date API for doing repeating events, and I didn't show that. It's a bit complicated. Um, it gets really complicated when you're showing them in a view because you have to figure out how that's going to work. And there's a few little glitches. Um, there's, v there's problems with the repeating dates and the, v the view pager. So if you've got a view that's only producing um, three or four events and you've set the pager to show uh, after 10, but your three or four events have repeating occurrences, many more than 10, uh, the pager won't pop up. Pager only pops up if the num if the actual number of event nodes is greater than uh, the the pager limit. Once you get the pager to pop up, 
then it'll let you page through all the occurrences of the repeating events. But there's just some little glitches with that stuff. Hopefully, it'll get worked out in Drupal 7. All right, thanks, everybody, for coming. <laughs>